All right, folks, it's uh, early April during pandemic times, and I had to come on, I had to uh, get out of the house. So I am at Cherry Creek State Park, which is right next to our house, like less than a mile away, and got Loki here. And we're just doing like a hike and coffee. So with the uh, new rules of the pandemic, I thought maybe I could, it's kind of hard to make a good trip hiking video. Um, but I thought I could talk about the rules of the various park systems. I did a little bit of research, and by that I mean I did no research. This is mostly from memory, and rules obviously vary depending on uh, regions. So this is, you know, somewhat. Uh, Colorado specific but I would say it's it's general enough uh, to use as a rule of thumb but check your local parks regulations for the real details so I'll be talking about um, kind of four rough groupings of parks types that will be your regional, county, city parks, then state parks, then national parks, then other national um, park land, BLM land, national forests, stuff like that. And really the levels of restrictions in doing things in those parks. So whether it's, you know, my favorite thing, bringing beer, or um, bringing pets, uh, firearms I don't know too much about because I'm not a firearms guy, um, camping, and yeah, mostly those, those types of categories. So the easiest category to talk about is probably your um, regional parks. These would be city parks, county parks. Um, there are some great park systems here like the Jefferson County Park System which is right in the foothills of the mountains kind of the closest um, mountain area to us in southern uh, Denver suburbs uh, they have an awesome regional park system uh, county park system there with great hiking trails generally those types of parks will have Facilities at trailheads, bathrooms, that type of thing. Um, you're pretty limited from a camping perspective. Not many of those parks have uh, camping facilities. I've come across a bit of a swamp here. Let's see. Looks like there's a path around it. Those regional parks will generally be the most restrictive um, as far as camping, fires, uh, that type of thing. Generally you're good with pets in those type of parks. Very few of them will have, um, you know, organized camping areas. Um, like uh, reservable camping areas. Very few of them will allow for any kind of backcountry camping. All right, I did find a little bridge here. Someone created. Let's, uh, come on, bud. All right, now we can find, get back to the trail up here. Can you see the, uh, I brought my telephoto lens, so I'll give you a, view of the mountains since 
we're not getting the close-up view at least we can get the far out view all right so next on the list is state parks and that's where I'm right now Cherry Creek State Park you can see all the homes right over there <laughs> that's where I live in that neighborhood uh, so state parks will be kind of the next level as far as the general restrictive nature of the parks generally state parks a lot of state parks will have um, camping areas in them again not many have uh, dispersed camping but they'll have uh, good facilities and organized camping this park Cherry Creek State Park is really made for recreation um, so they've got a reservoir you can go canoeing and kayaking they have uh, uh, decent sized camping grounds mostly for RVs and that type of thing they have a pretty good trail network for bikes hiking and that type of thing um, let's go check out this bridge here uh, with the the path to nowhere very questionable location for the bridge yeah so we've got the bridge uh, a lot of reedy area down here there's this super like swampy green area here that the trail is supposed to run through there's also um, a big off-leash dog park here which is a great place to take Loki he loves to go there and run around I'm following the social isolation rules so I've taken this kind of beaten path off the beaten path trail and staying away and if anyone comes near me BAM oh the thing I mentioned about regional didn't mention about regional parks is most regional parks don't have fees um, whereas most state parks will have an entry fee I've actually walked from our neighborhood um, to this park so I didn't have to pay a fee but we pay the yearly Colorado State Parks fee um, so we can enter any state park that we want to all right, let's see where this trail's going. There's another little bridge here. I'm trying to get to a section of the trail that has some uh, trees and uh, and the creek here, so I can make some coffee, and then hopefully I can find a little spot off the trail that doesn't have constant runners and bikers tromping through getting all up my business state parks and regional parks pets generally allowed uh, there are a couple state parks here in Colorado where pets are not allowed Roxboro State Park which is a great park with some interesting rock features but dogs are not allowed there so since I usually have Loki with me I tend to go to those places where dogs are allowed but regional state parks generally dogs are good there's actually some uh, cactus little cactus plants here at this part high plains I don't know if you can see that back there, uh, but that there's the full front range within view. I'll try to get you a little video of that. All right, I'm up on this uh, ridge here, so you can see down into the park. You can see the majority of the park here and the boundaries with the houses, but it goes 
it's a pretty big park. Um, out that way is the reservoir. Uh, there's Cherry Creek that runs through the park as well. Dog Park is out that way. So I don't know if the mountains were showing up, but you can see um, down from Pikes Peak south all the way up to Rocky Mountain National Park and Long's Peak. It's pretty cool. Let's try to find a place where we can kind of sit down and make some coffee. There's a bunch of people on the main path down here, so I need to find a place that's going to be away from them. Alright, found a little place to sit down, take a break, and trail's right up here, uh, but that's okay. Um, we'll make a little coffee, and let's move on to national parks. Alright, so now let's talk, talk um, national parks. Got my coffee made. National parks, like Rocky Mountain National Park, um, that's a closest, most famous one to us here. Although, having lived in Colorado now for two and a half years, I still haven't been to Rocky Mountain National Park. Um, uh, Yosemite National Park, uh, Glacier National Park, etc. Right? Everybody knows the national parks. So the national park system, America's greatest idea. Is that what the quote is? Something like that. Uh, as far as restrictions and the rules go there, one thing that's kind of um, important for me, coming with this guy all, all the time, is most national parks do not allow for pets on trails. They allow for pets in parking lots and uh, some of the lodging they might have, campsites and, and that type of thing, but not on trails. Um, they generally have campsites, there's generally a fee to enter the park, um, there's oftentimes backcountry camping as well, oftentimes with the permit, so permit-based systems. So sometimes it's hard to uh, find a place to camp in the in national parks, or there, you even have a lottery for some of the very popular ones. So um, generally, you're not supposed to have fires outside of designated areas, or you know, fire pits and, and designated campsites. Uh, it'll be very rare that you can just kind of have a fire wherever you want, even in a national park. Um, Use of alcohol, generally allowed in campsites. So regional and state parks, another thing, generally alcohol is not allowed anywhere in regional and state parks. Legal recreational use of marijuana is even not, is not allowed in most public places, even in Colorado, a state where it's legal. So marijuana, even in legal states, not allowed, not allowed in any national parks, not allowed in any national forests and that type of thing either. Uh, firearms, generally not allowed in national parks. I don't know if you can hear in the background, every now and then here, but there's actually a shooting ground um, here in the state park. Alright, so getting on to the final uh, category. National parks, BLM land, um, sorry, national forests, BLM land, um, and non-national park federal public lands generally have the least restrictive rules. You can generally camp uh, and do dispersed camping in uh, national forests uh, as long as you're obeying rules like camping, you know, 100 feet, 200 feet from uh, trails, 200 feet from water, something like that, 100, 200. Um, you can uh, even car camp in certain places for uh, I believe it's two weeks at a time and then you have to move within you have to move farther than a five mile distance or something like that 
you can have fires when you're not in a fire ban um, and again following certain rules like you have to be with uh, farther than a certain distance away from uh, trails and and uh, water features etc some some parks won't allow fires at all uh, some national parks uh, some national forests National Forest, you are allowed to bring pets on trails. Um, yeah, so um, oftentimes in National Forest, you can even harvest wood with a permit system. National Forest trails are generally free, no kind of permit permitting. So generally, that's where I like to go, especially when I do my uh, hike and cook or camp and cook videos is National Forest lands because there, it's plentiful here in the West. Um, and there are fewer restrictions on, you know, making fires, bringing my dog on the trails, etc., etc. They also tend to be, have the fewest facilities, restrooms and that type of thing. Um, and they tend to be the least crowded. So that's really another reason I like National Forests. Uh, fewer people. One of the places I go to a lot, you'll see them, you'll have seen it in a lot of my videos, is um, Arapaho National Forest. Where Mount Evans is, it's uh, one of the closer national, large national forest areas uh, to where I'm located uh, in the Denver suburbs. So, I hope you found that somewhat educational. Uh, now you know a little more about the general rules of parks, and uh, I do highly recommend if you, when you go to a park, depending on what you're planning on doing, you check the rules so that you know that you're following the appropriate guidelines. And in the crazy times now, let's also follow the rules. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.